figure subscription service number eight from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club has arrived. The next figure that we are going to look at is Bulletproof. Here we have Bulletproof from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service number eight. Let's take a look at the packaging here. So in the bubble we have the figure and the accessories. We have a vintage style kind of explosion backed portrait. Here's Bulletproof in all of his glory. I mean, look at this. He is so awesome that he's launching this missile and it's blowing up behind him. You know, not many people can say that. But anyway, that's a really cool, I like this image of him. It's, it's, it's kind of just an updated version of the old one, but they had to replace the, the missile launcher with his old style for, uh, to the new style. The bottom left corner, we have a more of an 80s Hasbro logo. And in the top left corner, it says Adult Collectible. And not for children under three years old. Well, if it's an adult collectible, why would they even need to put that there? Anyway, but I don't see why a child of around eight years old or older couldn't have this toy to play with. And in the top right corner, it's got the G.I. Joe logo and the G.I. Joe Club website and exclusive, meaning it costs a lot of money. So anyway, this is bulletproof and he looks really good. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right off the bat. This is a cool looking figure. Here it says he's the Battle Corps Commander, but I remember once upon a time he was the Drug Elimination Force Leader. So, probably because they don't use DEF much or at all anymore, he's been kind of like transitioned into the Battle Corps. Because he came out around the time that they were introducing Battle Corps as the main line of G.I. Joe figures. So we're going to flip the package around here and take a look at that. So here we go. In the top left corner, we've got GIJoClub.com, their website. And in the middle, we kind of got a larger, uh, more impressive, you know, he's got a big chunk taken of his hat portrait with part of the explosion. And on the right side of the package, if we turn it sideways, we have G.I. Joe Club Exclusive 8-3. And, you know, my running joke at the moment is, no, this is not August 3rd, but this is figure subscription service number 8, and this is the third release even though they come in two packs. I'm having a lot of fun. This is my first and my last FSS, so anyway. Down here we got the modern Hasbro logo. We got the G.I. Joe Club logo website thing again. And we got some legalities about this figure is not posable, like so, and Lottie Dottie is made in China, and this is G.I. Joe Collector's Club stuff. And as I point out in all of them, this figure is missing down here the list of accessories coming inside because they're trying to make this look vintage. Gosh, it looks good, doesn't it? I like the look of this package. I like all of them. Anyway, they're trying to make it look vintage, but they missed one. Small details. I know, small details. So anyway, here is the heart of the G.I. Joe package, the file card. The file card that talks about the character, brings the character to life. Oops, sorry, I bumped my audio device. And just Let's our imaginations flow, as when we were kids, as we are to, as we are as adults. Anyway, so I'm going to read through this file card. Codename Bulletproof. He is the Battle Corps commander. His file name is Morris, comma Earl S. So Earl Morris. Primary specialty, military specialty, is Urban Operations Commander, and the secondary military specialty is Federal Marshal. Ooh, cool. Birthplace is Chicago, Illinois, and he has a grade of 04. I'm not going to read the serial number because, you know, why? So, no mention of the DEF or Drug Elimination Force in this area. Let's see what's down here. So, Bulletproof served in Central America, the Golden Triangle, and the Caribbean as a field officer for a federal enforcement agency before drawing the assignment to head the G.I. Joe Battle Corps. His code name was given to him by the very people he tracked down, the world's criminal leaders and their private armies of Uzi-wielding thugs. Uzi-wielding. That's an interesting anyway. So Bulletproof was given his name by the bad guys. I'd have to look at his old file card to see what that says. In countless raids and all-out firefights, they saw him leading his men into the thick of the action, and he never took a single hit. They said, he must be bulletproof. Interesting. 
I would probably say he must be lucky. Anyway, because bulletproof, doesn't that mean the bullets bounce off? And and he never took a hit. So anyway, I guess that's just getting into wordplay. Bulletproof is in charge of urban law enforcement operations, which includes the deployment of the G.I. Joe SWAT special weapons and tactics against Cobra high value targets. His mission objectives is to seriously degrade their hierarchy and ability to function with impunity. So his little quote here, I'm going to have to reference the old file card to see how much of this is the same. But anyway, his quote is, I take down the greediest, most ruthless criminals in the world. Yeah, I give everyone an accent. Sorry about that. So anyway, there's Bulletproof's file card. So... Yeah, there's no mention of DEF or Drug Elimination Force. I knew they were kind of phasing that out. He's got just a G.I. Joe logo. I'm actually kind of surprised that since he is a Battle Corps commander, and they mention that the, on the front there and the back, that they didn't use this opportunity to uh, slab the, not slab, but place the Battle Corps logo on here. That would have been kind of cool to get an updated or get a reminder of of that somewhere you know they have the cobra logo up here and stuff but put boom right there you know um battle core anyway you know just little things nothing that's a make or break it that's just little extras so unlike some packaging uh this one doesn't stand up it falls right on over it's actually gonna be front heavy because he's got some stuff in here yes he does Alrighty, huh. you can really see that this has been bubbled on there. It's a thick, a thick bubble. I don't know if they're all that thick, but that really shows through back here. Yeah, you can see it right there. So anyway, the next step is my favorite, and that's tearing it open. Well, not tearing it open, but taking a knife and just kind of cutting around the top and the side and the bottom and so forth. So anyway, I will be right back because I'm going to cut him open off screen. All right, here he is. He is all cut open. You can tell, can't you? Well, sure you can. It, uh, wiggle. oh, look at that. It just fell out. His figure stand couldn't wait to get out. But yeah, see, it's all open. So like I said, I kind of cut along the top and the side and the bottom. That way I can take it out or slide it back in if I decide to want to. Uh, since they don't stand up, they're wobbly. They do have these little hooks right here. So you could like hang it up on your wall or get like a, you know, buy like an old Toys R Us display and hang it there. And, you know, I'm just going to stand back, sit back here for a second and admire this again. It's not that I really like Bulletproof, but for some reason, this is the first card that just, I'm like holding back and looking like, that's just really cool. That's a neat, just the whole whole display, the the logo, the figure, the it's it, it it brings it back. So let's pull him out, and then we're gonna toss this up. Ooh, ding ding dong! Gonna toss that off to the side. Now I'm not gonna throw it and hurt it, but so let's put that there. Yeah, figure stand will be right there. So what do we got here? Well, we don't have much. We'll take him out. He's kind of in front of everything. So, there's the man of the hour. Or the moment. Or the second. Whatever. Let's take this thing out. Set that there next. And let's figure out how to carefully remove this little gun. Now, there are some differences and some similarities. There we go. It's free! Throw this off to the side now. Now, first off, I'm going to just take a quick look at this gun. This is a different gun. If I remember, I'm, I'm having to think back. I didn't look anything up before I did this. I'm thinking back. He had a green gun. Maybe it's the same. No, I tend to, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking it's a different gun that he had. This is most definitely different. This is not the same. In fact, this is actually kind of cool, because Bulletproof comes from the era where there was lots of Boom! Spring action. <laughs> Spring action launchers. And they did the... Ooh, whoa, that's a... Ooh, be really careful of that. Ooh, that's very... That's bendable. Um, anyway, bulletproof... How do you get this back in? Okay. 
comes from the era of spring-loaded launchers to, funny as it may sound, promote playability while they also warned, don't shoot each other. So, I know we've got, uh, we've all got a, a friend in Hooded Cobra Commander who likes to uh, set his Dr. Mindbender guy up and test out all the spring-loaded launchers that he can. I don't have Dr. Mindbender with me, but boom! This is an A+. Plus. It works. So there's a, a little shout-out to him. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just noticing, as I was holding on to this, usually I, this is pretty tight plastic, you know, pretty sturdy stuff, and even the button is. But this, you got to watch out. This is, let's see if I can get this here. You know, let's... It, Let's take that thing out so I don't shoot myself in the eye while I'm doing this. But if you look at this, I don't know how to do this really well. Let's try that. Well, first off, you can kind of see it's a little bent already. See how loose that is? That's, that's really pretty loose. Now, it does look like it's a separate... Oh, get, get back here. It does look like it's a separate piece. I don't know if you can see that little seam there. But that handle itself, you're going to want to be careful with it. So anyway, the cool thing that the fact that they actually released this figure with this is neat. Bulletproof came with a DEF, I call it DEF style, launcher. And that is they had some little spark action, some battery stuff going on. And so when you launch the missile, it would light up. So anyway... That's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. So anyway, so he got the gun and that. So you'd think that's all he's got. Oh, no. There's more. If we turn him on his left side here, he's got a knife on his foot. He's got a gun on his hip. And we'll slide those back in there. And that's it. Now he's done. Although, you know, we got to do something about this arm. You know, that arm... Has some strangeness to it. Now, some of you may look at this figure and say, hey, I recognize him. And other people might say, well, of course you do. Bulletproof has been released before. No, that's not it. And that is, he looks awfully familiar simply because of the head sculpt. This is a recolored figure. He used to be known as Dodger. Dodger from the Battle Force 2000, who's uh, gotten a lot of use. He was a part of the convention set, ooh, was it 2017? I believe 2017. And recently, he was part of the Final 12 as Sonic Fighters Dodger, which when I was at the convention, I heard quite a few people mention, oh, they're going to do that one, oh, we're going to get that one, and they're very excited. So they got that one, and I hope they're very excited, and I hope they bought it. Alrighty, so that's why this guy looks familiar. But because of that, his helmet doesn't come off. Back in the day, he would take his green helmet off, he had like this flat top. And so you can't see that now, but you know, I'm okay with that. Not that I have to be okay, not that anybody like Hasbro or the Collector's Club cares, because I'm here to buy product. I'm here to buy things I like. And so it doesn't bother me either way, and they don't care. Oh, by the way, another accessory is... This little uh, over-the-shoulder belt, which I've been kind of glancing at it. I don't see any way of actually taking it off. So you may have to get creative and kind of slide it over his arm and his head. So anyway, um, it's a good figure. I like it. I like the color, and there's a, a very strong resemblance to the 1990s version. Let's see, DEF, off the top of my head. I kind of want to say 92 or 93. 90 or 91, I believe, was way too early. It has to be 92 or later, and it wasn't 94 because they didn't have DEF in 94. So, it's, yeah, I might land on 93. I'll have to look that up myself. So what's he do? Well, his head's got some rather limited motion. Anybody who's got a Dodger figure knows that. So that's about all he does right there. got to keep my hand out of this light. So his head doesn't move back and forth too much. It does go in circles, so he can turn it all around and hokey pokey and all, but he's kind of a stiff figure. There we go. We'll kind of straighten him out. So lifting his arms straight up, that's as high as they go. If we rotate them, since you know they rotate, all figures do, 
Check that out. So if we rotate them up to where his armpits are sticking straight up, he can go that far. He kind of does a Y. You know, Y, M, C, A, and all that? No. Y, M, C, A. I'm not going to do the other letters. But I should find uh, three other figures. That would work awesome. So we'll flatten these arms back out. And his elbows, they go all the way around. Let's straighten that back out. And he is a little bit tight. His elbows kind of go back, so you can make him look like he fell off a building or something and he broke some stuff. See, look at that. Oh my goodness, he's so... He's deformed. Anyway, let his el elbows bend. And, oh, when you do that, check out that. He's got some muscle on him. Do it that way. Man, look at that. He's got some muscle. Bum, bum, bum. And we'll look at his wrist next. Now, that's too low. So they rotate, that's for sure. But they also rotate like so. Anyway, so we can rotate them up, which actually makes them look so much better. I thought they were like deformed. So we'll, we'll do this guy right here. Down and up and rotate it all about. That's what they both do. Let's take a look at the hands and his grips because G.I. Joe is known for molded stuff nowadays. I don't really like them because I think it reduces how much you can actually use the hands. You can't just put anything in the hands when they're kind of molded for something. But anyway, it's my thought. So that's kind of what the hands look like there. He's got some fing fingers sticking out here and there. His chest, he can rotate all the way around. And he can, he kind of has like a neck problem happening here. He's kind of bent over. But he moves about that much. And his legs will let him do the splits about that far. Wee! And his feet, he can s sit about like so. So, not real, man, he's just got, he got to have a neck problem, this guy. And then if you're going to swing his legs back, he can jump out of the plane at about like that angle. And with most of these modern figures, he's got a double knee joint. This one's actually loose. This uh, right leg is loose for mine. And there. Now you can kind of cuddle all up with his legs all tight. I don't know. Boom. So his actually, his leg joints are pretty easy to move around. And his ankles rotate, rotate, and they bend. They're a lot better than, uh, say, like Red Laser. He can actually do some ballet tiptoe. Let's put his arms up like so. And we've got the bulletproof DEF ballet. Do, 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 do. He's on point. Do, 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 do. Anyway. And he can bring... I'm kind of pushing these feet just a little bit, but he can do something like that. So he can kind of crawl up the side of a hill. Yeah. So he's got really good articulation. He's got the pretty well standard articulation of most. I don't really like the elbows too much. They kind of stick out and they straighten up. And I'm going to apologize real quick for all the little bumps you may be hearing in the audio because I keep bumping it. I'm trying not to, but man. So anyway... That's his articulation. So what about here? He's got a lot of interesting detail all over him. Like there's a belt here, and I'm going to just make the assumption that it's all camouflage, so it's not really supposed to be painted. But he's got kind of tan boots, and he's got a tan holster, and a tan sheath, and a tan, well, this isn't part of the figure, but a tan, um, I don't know what the official terminology is, a uh, chest belt is what I'll call it. And on this side, he's got a little tan pouch. And he's got tan gloves, but everything else is green with the little uh, digital type camo all over it. So there's some things unpainted, like he's got some pockets back here on his pants. He's got a belt right there. And he's got some interesting detail on his shoulders. So I'm going to make the assumption that they're not supposed to be painted because of the camo pattern. Now, it almost looks like this. The thing around his neck 
it kind of has some loose rubbery pieces like it's supposed to come off i never had dodger from the 2017 convention set and i'm not getting sonic fighters dodger so i don't really know about that piece so anyway how well does he hold stuff well let's put the gun in his hand maybe that's kind of tight i'd be afraid to put the missile launcher there all right so let's do this little number there we go he is looking at you kid so he can hold that pretty well it's not going to fall out how about the other hand ah, there we go so yeah that's pretty tight too red laser had a left hand that was just really loose all right so let's take a look at this thing here uh oh my battery's dying better hurry up and do this so you're going to want to be really careful sliding this in. In fact, this may be one of those accessories nobody ever really uses because it might break. I'm going to do it here, but that's about it. It's kind of cool. Works really well. So unfortunately, just for the sake of time and the fact my battery is blinking at me, and I'm, it's like the gaslight on the car. I probably have like about four more minutes of recording, and then it's just going to flip out on me. I'm going to say there he is. This is bulletproof. He looks really cool. I like him. I haven't found a figure I don't like yet. And so here we go. It's time for the roundabout. Thank you for stopping by. If you want to drop me a line, please do so in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to be notified of future videos, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon next to it. I will see you next time.